Hey guys, it's Ralph Mayhew here. Been thinking about a cool shoot for a little while now. I'm not sure how it's going to go, but it involves this. This is a circular 50 cent piece. I don't know if you can get a close up on that. Uh, it's made of sterling silver. Um, I actually found it when I was 13 years old. I helped my dad with a rotary thing and they did a raffle and people chipped in their money and I got to count some of the money at the end and I stumbled across this exact coin and so I, um, I talked to dad and dad gave me 50 cents that I could replace it with and I've had it ever since, a round circular 50 cent piece and if you're in Australia you'll know how rare that is if you're overseas um, it's really rare, there's a number of them around but it kind of launched me into collecting 50 cent pieces and I think I've nearly all of them that have ever been um, made all the different series and there's different designs on them and so forth and I was pondering this week what what if I could take a photo of this in mid <laughs> flick and given the weather's been pretty rubbish lately we're kind of confined to our homes um, I thought I would spend some time doing that and take you along for the ride so do you want to come <laughs> excellent well, let's go. So here's the deal, it's a dark night, I want a dark background. I'm gonna use a high shutter speed, like somewhere like 1 600th, 1 800th will start and see how that goes. But to capture the coin, when you shoot on such a fast shutter speed, it means the shutter's open like this. And so you can't see anything, so you need to light it well. Now, I think with this light really close to my camera here, um, it should light well. I'm using a shutter release cable. You'll notice that the videos I do, when I make one like this, it's just me. And so to do that, you need a way of fiddling with the props at the same time as opening the shutter. This is a cable release. You plug it into your camera. Most DSLR cameras only can take them. And you just click that and it takes a photo, right? Now I would suggest when it comes to shutter releases, buy a really cheap third party one. You could spend $50, $60 on a native one and they do exactly the same job as a $6 or $7 one from a third party. You really want one though that you can push down and then push up and lock it so it locks the camera to whatever you want. I did a Milky Way shoot and a Star Trail shoot where I used that technique. It's just here if you want to go check it out. Now my coin, I polished this up. It smells like a coin and it's nice and shiny because we want it shiny, we want it to catch the light. Let's talk about focus. You can't rely on autofocus to catch a coin that goes like this and like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the coin stationary and my camera set them that distance away. I'm going to measure the distance, focus in, manual focus on the camera and lock it off on the lens. So the focus point can't change. And then I'm going to set my camera up, I'm going to measure the distance, put a mark on the ground and that's where I'm going to flick it from and hopefully my flicking skills are good. I'm gonna start an aperture of four, so that gives a little bit of depth of field, which means a little bit of room for error when it comes to capturing it and focusing in on it, and it would be really cool if this side could be, um, could be focused. Now I have no idea if this is gonna even look good, and so what I'm gonna do is set the camera up, and you can watch how I kinda walk through it, try and see and adapt as we go along. Now as you can see, the coin is set up here against the lens cap, and my camera's here, and it's, it's straight, and so when I take the photo, I want the coin to be straight where the camera is, and so I need it to be the right height. I need the center of the lens to be the same height as the center of the coin, and then I'm gonna move it as close as I can, focus, put it on manual, fine tune it, and lock it off. So I just focus right in on that, and it's pin sharp. Now, that means this space, which is exactly 520 mils, is the magic number that I need to flick the coin 520 mils from the lens to get a focused shot. I'm gonna set it back up here, and then we're gonna get stuck into it. So once you're all set up, and you think you've got your distances and focus and that all right, you wanna hold the coin above where you think you're gonna throw it, flip it, and you just wanna take a photo, and then you just zoom in to see that spot on. The final thing I've gotta do is I reposition this light to capture the coin in all its glory right here that will be spectacular keen yeah. this is not going to work is it 
I'm going to start with an ISO 640, a shutter speed of 1 over 640 and an aperture of 7.1 with this glaring light about as close as I can get it to the coin and um, well, let's see. It's pretty good I haven't dropped the coin yet. So all of those coin flips were missed except for one that was very very blurry which means I've got to increase the shutter speed a lot. A little experiment. Edge of the coin. Oh, so close. This is proving to be a bit of a challenge. I'm still not shooting fast enough, it's just a blur. So I've got, I think I've got to flick it more gently and go faster. <coughs> Makes such a cool noise. Can you hear that noise? Listen to this noise. Ready? Oh, so nice. We're getting closer and closer. My ISO is about a thousand, but I don't want to go much higher than that. I really want it to be crisp and non noisy. I think we're getting close. That's actually looking much better. Um, have a look at this. Not bad, right? Getting close. I'm on 1250 ISO, but I'm on five thousandth of a second shutter speed. I've never ever put the camera on that fast because. Um, when you do a sunrise, um, it doesn't quite come up that quick, <laughs> like maybe a bullet or a coin. I'm now on an 8,000th of a shutter speed, 1,000 ISO, 6.3 f-stop, getting better, getting closer. Just realised, I'm flicking the coin like this, so you're really only ever going to see the edge. What I actually need to do is face the camera and flick it so it flicks this way. So you can actually see the face. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. In fact, it's so good, I'm gonna show you. So you can see it straight out of the back of camera rather than any manipulation or anything on it. Can you see that? There it is. Right there. In all its glory. How good's that? <laughs> Job done. If you enjoyed this, subscribe, come along, there'll be a bunch more videos like this of this creative crazy idea that you're like, would that actually work? And maybe it doesn't turn out to look absolutely stunning, maybe it's just a cool thing to see if your skills can be extended into that. And that's so much of what photography is, it's increasing your skill level so that when you're in the pinch, when you have that incredible moment, you have the skills developed to be able to catch that, you understand your gear really well, um, and you can just take hold of it. So subscribe, ring the bell so you get notifications, and it helps like the channel get known by more people so more people can be get part of this thing, right, and have, have fun. Um, and if you like it, give it a thumbs up. And, well, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.